Okay, so money, money, money. This is, um, I've been looking forward to this one. I feel like it's very topical and timely in the world at the moment that we're in. And I want to begin with a, um, with a roomy quote. Can you guys? So um, Rumi says, still, after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights up the whole sky. So I want to make the journey in this conversation, this transmission today between an economy that's basically the economy of the world personality, which has got an obligation to survive compared with the economy of the world soul, which is a huge opportunity to love. So the very core parts, the very core difference between these two is a civilization based on survival and fear versus a civilization based on love and contribution. So I want to start by, by acknowledging that that transition has to go on inside every cell in the civilization and it's going to take time and it doesn't just happen overnight. So as it's going on in our individual lives, it's also going on in our collective lives. <sighs> Let's just pause for a moment. I want to I want to talk to my tech team. Could you guys move? It's too... I think we're plugged in. Yeah, but you're right there in front of me. So... <laughs> or even back there, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> So as we change the, the, as the soul of the world starts to become more active and it comes down into our hearts and then drops into the lower chakras, it said that the sacral center is like the last stronghold of our materialistic tendencies. And so down there, our issues around sexuality, our issues around money and our issues around power and survival are most strong in our shamanic underbelly, which is why people uh, often do their work, their consciousness uh, awakens first and they can have enlightened consciousness, but their wallet is still deeply closed. Their, their, um, their sexuality is still very possessive. Their, their, when push comes to shove, their life is based on survival first. And so we have a whole economy or a system that's based on that. It's based on first survive and then maybe love later. And for the economy of the new world, it has to be based, first of all, on love, that love is the, the, the priority. It's the prime directive. It's the imperative and instead of actually survival being the imperative so as as we are in a world now that's in that change uh it it's it's going to come under pressure we have a few more years of pluto and capricorn we have the enormous uh printing of money all over the world we have cryptocurrencies emerging we have this whole radical shift in uh, the world economy, and that's going to keep accelerating. So the next few years are going to see a radical economic change. And of course, there's no way to survive this. So even the idea that, um, well, how do I look after my money? Like, how do I, how do I, you know, take money and keep it safe during this current this crisis that's ahead? And um, so I want to, I want to put it to you um, during this transmission that there is no safe investment for money now other than the soul and soil, the evolution of humanity, the, the movement towards the values of love that's at the core of the soul. There is no other way because anything else is coming from the very fear and survival that is at the root of the 
existing financial system. So maybe let's just begin by looking at that route. I'm not going to go into all of the, the, the details of the world economy, but just to say that our financial system is based primarily on debt. So, uh, and, and that runs the adrenals, it runs the base center, it keeps everybody moving forward. It's based on, on debt and having to work to produce. So it's based on like being behind the eight ball from the start, um, the Protestant work ethic, the progress, the dominion over the earth, all of those sits at the very root of our money supply system. So where money comes from, and that's not where its origin was, but that's where it comes from in our current system. So the, the deep recognition that in order to change that, we have to get out of, uh, we have to get out of that, that um, energy of the system. So one of the things that's happening with crypto, cryptocurrencies is that it's decentralizing. So we no longer have um, the power and control at the center of money that's debt-based and run by governments that are uh, seeking to ensure survival and to ensure a driven economy that has to keep producing. So that's the first thing. It's beautiful to, to disrupt uh, centralized control if that control is based on fear. So, you know, cryptocurrencies are basically decentralizing to the web they're saying you know basically the power system is corrupt and the economic system is corrupt so let's have the web work and the web then allows other values to start to express the thing is that the web itself doesn't is value free it's a system it's a decentralized system and ultimately there is going to a need again to be some kind of centralization, but it's not necessarily a centralization of supply, it's a centralization of value. So the first attempt to break free of negative power structures is to eliminate power altogether. And that ultimately doesn't work. It, it's a disruptive process. Eventually there still needs to be some form of hierarchy because nature is full of hierarchies. In other words, the, the earth goes around the sun, the sun goes around the center of the galaxy, atoms form molecules, molecules form cells, and, and then tissues and organs and beings. So hierarchy is just a natural order of cosmos. But a hierarchy of love, each level supports all of the other levels. This is the roomy thing. The, uh, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. It doesn't give its light debt-based to, to make sure that the earth has to produce in order to pay back its giving. It gives in such a way that the earth, using the light of the sun, naturally is creative and expresses fertility and expresses life because it's held in a greater life and it's drawing sustenance from that greater life. So... A love hierarchy is very different from control fear-based hierarchies. Love hierarchies, each level is flooding its generosity into the level of everything that it contains. And that generates life, which then overflows into its next level. So the universe is a fractal um, creation of love and generosity. And it's one of the most tragic things that humans have turned the abundance um, of the earth and of the universe and of the love that's in the earth and the universe into a debt-based driven survival um, economy, which, which um, chokes the life out of the soul rather than, than allows it to flower. So I have to look at that root and have to look at the root of um, what happened, what happened with money, which was originally really a, um, a means of, of storing the abundance of the earth. So where money came from is 
spare crops needed to be stored. The abundance of the earth from one season needed to be stored and given to the next season and needed to be stored. And then they invented little pieces of, of um, wood or copper or whatever to, to recognize that you'd stored money, you'd stored um, creativity, you'd stored fertility from one season to the next. So money originated from the abundance of earth and then later on has become an object in itself. So um, when money is sought for its own sake, just like when power is sought for its own sake or sex is sought for its own sake, you have deep materialism. You have deep entrenched materialism. So now the object that was supposed to be a recognition of the abundance of earth becomes itself the sought after thing. So I'm going to give you a few recommendations about how we bring this, this laundering of money in our own lives and start to make the shift because it's so deeply entrenched in us. It's so deeply entrenched in the society that we live in that it's very hard to see it differently. And, and it has to actually be experientially worked with in your own life to launder money from its grip um, around the base center and around survival into an overflowing flood of love that is generated from the abundance of your soul and heart. So here's the first recommendations in, in order to make the shift from one world to the other. So there's a world where money is used primarily as a mechanism for survival. And there is a world where money is used primarily as an overflow of love from the soul. So in order to make that change or that transition, the first recommendation is get out of debt because debt drives the, the base center from a place of needing to produce. So uh, an elimination of debt uh, is, is one of the first priorities so that the soul can then generate its creativity. Um, a, a realization that all of our words around money that used to be Venusian words, you know, like interest and value and appreciation and investment. These are all soul word, words. These are all words that come from value and love. And they've been turned into purely economic terms. So that's the second thing is don't, if you want to, to have money work from the soul, You've got to shine like the sun, which is do don't do anything with the expectation of a return. So get out of debt, so not being driven, and then begin to give like the sun. Find what makes you come alive. Find what allows your soul to experience its uh, abundant creativity in the same way that the nuclear forces at the core of the sun just produce light. There's something at the core of the human soul that when we access it, it's a limitless um, power of creativity. So begin to find what makes you come alive, what makes the nuclear reactions go off in the core of your own being and just begin to shine that. So that's, that's the second thing, invest in your own soul development. There are two major sources of wealth, of true wealth. And I would say they are soul and soil. Both of these powerful energies are generative. If they're looked after, they accumulate wealth over time. In the same way that soil, when it's looked after, not when it's monoculturally farmed, but when soil is looked after, it grows a matrix of fertility that supports life. And the same process of the evolution of soil on the planet, when it's looked after and it is uh, abundantly recycling materials into it, the same is true of the human soul. That when the soul is generative, it 
pours energy into the world soul and the world soul like the soil becomes enriched it becomes composted with all of the amazing gifts that human souls have made to the world soul over time and then that soil begins to be something that can be drawn from we can draw draw from the soil of the earth and the soul of the earth to generate even more abundance the, the two main things that stop the, the drawing from the soul and the soil is fear and possession. So we have a civilization that's based on property ownership. So that's like owning the soil and intellectual property, which is like owning the creativity of the soul. As soon as you have a civilization that tries to own those things, you start to collapse into an identity. You start to collapse into my piece of earth and my ideas. So, so when you make it your property, you actually limit yourself from drawing on the whole soul of the earth and the whole soil of the earth. So those are two other things to be careful of. Be careful of trying to own land. Like, by all means, invest in soil, which means planting and growing and harvesting and recognizing that there is a tremendous abundant power in the earth. And not just in terms of growing things, but the Kundalini of the earth is tremendously powerful, but not if you try to own it. Not if you try to own it and make it produce so that you can survive. So the whole idea of owning land and then making that land be productive so that we can earn money, so that we can survive is an insult to the energy that is actually in the land, that the abundance of in, in the land. So these are all um, difficult things to work with because we're so conditioned. So to become conditioned of a society that's based on property ownership and property development and come back into a relationship with soil. And you can get into a relationship with soil without owning the land. And if you do own the land, you can own it in a totally different way that allows you to, to um, draw on the resources in a partnership with the earth, to be a lover of the earth rather than, than to be an owner or have dominion over it. So getting in touch with soil is an important way of grounding. And it's also important for currency. And we're going to get into like what, what really drives currency later. But so these are the steps that if you've done them in your own life, you'll recognize them. If you haven't done them, coming up with new ideas about um, money is not going to help because money has to be sourced in true wealth. And that true wealth has to be discovered experientially in each person's life. So get out of debt, um, invest in your creativity and find what makes you come alive. Connect with soil, like find a way of connecting with it as a living being. And when we let go of like personal ownership, then you realize that you, when you connect with the soil, you connect with the whole earth, like the whole soil of earth is all on the crust and it all has access to this deep power that is the earth itself, earth kundalini. And just like a person, if you truly love one person deeply all the way to the core, then all people recognize that you have that power. And if you truly love one place, one piece of soil, if you get into relationship with soil, then the whole earth can feel you as a lover of earth and the soil, the powers of the earth to come and support you are incredible. Like, it's almost impossible to speak about this to anyone who hasn't experienced it because when there is a relationship between you and soil, that earth power comes and supports you energetically in your aura, in your body, in your food supply, in, in, um, in, in having you come be on the land, the land itself wants living alive human beings who love it on it. So this is part of temple culture is to find where your body has connection with the earth. Another way is to begin to allow money to flow where love 
wants it to flow. So in the old days, we had, uh, you know, tithing in churches. And, um, and when somebody is deeply stuck in materialism, you know, the, the, the fear is that if they give money, even if they give money phil philanthropically or to churches or whatever, that that will somehow um, diminish their own supply. And so, and that they have to look after themselves. But my way of getting past that for people is to say, make the church your own heart. Make the thing that you give to your own heart. And a recommendation is to, to do an audit. Never mind the IRS and, and your accounting and so on. Like, do a personal audit of your own money, but not auditing it from. Um, the, the, the place that the IRS else would audit it from, but auditing it from your own soul. And so on one part of a piece of paper, put down your values that you have as a soul. Like, who am I? What matters to me? Why am I alive on the planet? Like, what makes me come alive? What are the things that I care about? What are the things that at the end of my life, I want to make sure um, uh, 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 that I lived, you know, write a living will. The, the, the stupid idea of that of a will is that it's read right after your death. And that means that you're not living your will while you're alive. So whatever you would leave your money to when you die is, is what your money should be going to now while you're alive. You know, maybe it's your children or maybe it's, you know, um, the environment or whatever. Is that money flowing now? So one, one side of the sheet of paper, what are my values? What if I was, was faced with life and death? What would be the things that I've harvested at the end of my life that, that I think matter? And remember I said in an earlier transmission that love was once the thing that we realized on our deathbed was the thing that really mattered. And now for a civilization that's going through the test of what have you learned about love and prove it, it's like start with love, start with with the death of the old civilization, start with writing your own living will of the things that matter to you. So once you have those, those things, those values, your core values, the things that most matter to you, then do an audit of your income and expenses. Like, what am I actually spending my money on? You know, record your, your, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly expenses and see if there's any kind of match between your values and your expenditure. Um, and also where your income is coming from. Like how does where my income is coming from relate to my value system around money? It's a very simple order, but when people do it, they become aware of where their work is. And we all have our personal work in order to change the, the, the economy of the world. Our personal work is to align our value systems and our money and to notice all of those places inside us that are like, well, actually, I need to earn money so that one day I can do the things that I came to do. It's like that process does not work and it's and it's never going to work anymore in the civilization that we're in the first thing has to be what makes me come alive what are my values how do i start to um flow money according to my value systems and how do i start to observe money coming towards me and open myself to money to come towards me along with those value systems so that, that's the, the investment in your soul and your soil and the getting out of debt and then the alignment of your deep value systems as a soul with the way that you use money. Even though the money that you're using is still part of a system that's got debt built into it and so on, it doesn't matter. You can bring value systems into the existing system which begin to launder money. It's kind of hilarious that they're bringing in all of these anti-money laundering laws, but the real laundering of money in the world that's going on is the soul is claiming back money as an expression of the abundance of soil and soul rather than a means in itself and a way to ensure survival. So there's a whole money laundering process that has to go on in your own life.
You know, you can, it's the reverse of like the mafia laundering money that they get from the, from drugs and casinos and turning it into money in the world. There's a reverse laundering process and you are, you have the mafia inside you. The mafia is that any part of you that would, would prostitute the, your, your deep being as a soul, as a being of love in order to make you have to go earn a living in order to make money doing something that you don't want to do in order to one day, maybe later, be able to shine the light that you came to shine. So we all have some version of this. Some people have done a lot of this work. Some people haven't done much at all. But there's a power in the universe that moves with you if you move with it. And so there's a there's a global process of money laundering going on and a breaking the hold of uh, money being held by fear and money itself is cooperating like the essence of what money truly is, is also a cooperative being so treating money as a living expression of the abundance of of the cosmos and earth is also part of it beginning to do ritual with money beginning to talk to money as it's a being instead of instead of having resentment towards money to open up the essence of what the soul of money truly is and meeting it with your soul so these are all practical things that we can do in our own lives and accounting the real accounting is doesn't have to do with um, your contribution to society, your real accounting has got to do with whether or not you're aligned with your own value systems around money and whether money truly is being used as love in your life. <sighs> and so then there's another way that you can help that flow, which is start to actively flow your money towards love. And in two directions one is to those that you see that are already acting in a in a more um money laundered way than you are in other words like the earth giving its energy to the sun because it sees the sun as a source of light so look at those people in your world that are already shining their light and giving it unconditionally and expressing the nuclear power in the core of their own being and shining the light of the world soul in their in their field and give them money because giving them money allows you to break it free from your you and them and then you are that which is shining through them because you're supporting it and one of the laws of the universe is that in the orbits of planets and stars and galaxies and so on is you orbit that which is beginning to emerge in you so a planet is going to be a star jupiter if it was a bit bigger would be a sun a sun has got black hole inside it so when we notice someone who is already expressing loving soul values in the world when we give them resources we're saying that's me that's the me that I'm aspiring to that is wanting to develop. So that's one direction. Of, uh, and that's a direction of hierarchy. It's of saying, I recognize those beings that are currently able to love more than me and I support them. And then the other way is to turn in, you know, like the sun looking out at the planets, look at the beings in your life that are trying to emerge more fully into soul, that you can help, that you can flow energy towards in such a way that gives them just that peace that helps them break forward into their next piece of creativity. So this is, this is the difference between a decentralized system, which is just a web, but that web can still be run by all consciousness. Cryptocurrencies can still be run by people still desiring to make money so that they can survive in their old age or whatever. Just because you have a decentralized system doesn't mean that you have a system that has at its core love. It means you have a system that is breaking free from having fear and control at its core, but it's value free. 
and for the currency to come the, the, and for our own being to be laundered around money, then we need to begin to move towards a, a, a system that's layered in the same way that the heart at the center of your blood supply has more blood than, than other organs in the body because it's using the blood to circulate through the whole body. So it's not, you know, communism is about giving every cell its own little piece of blood. Capitalism is about letting the, the you know, the, the cells that have the, are the, the most clever and the most, you know, um, uh, experience and who have got inheritance and so on, letting them, you know, be free to have as much blood as they want. But none of that is actually an integrated living ecosystem like the body, where the heart has plenty of blood because it's passing through it. So this is the other major thing about money is flow currency even the word currency means flow and money is supposed to move like blood and because money has so much fear and survival and um, tied up in it we store it so the storing of money in our superannuation and in our insurance and in our and in our old age and our health, you know, things all if that motivation is coming from fear and contraction and not having enough, that's the energy that 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 money will be transmitting in the world. So part of laundering then is to notice wherever your money, when you do your audit, where your money is currently moving out of fear or um, trying to provide for a future self that may not be able to uh, provide for itself. Like those things need to be moved over, gradually changed over to where is the money flowing love where is it coming from love where is it trusting the abundance of love where it is where is it affirming everything that i already have done in my life and will do in the future so this this transformation of our own money is is the value-based work that each person can do regardless of whether they have fiat currency or cryptocurrency or whatever, regardless of the form of the money, the soul of the money is the critical piece. And then later on, I wanna talk about how this, when the soul of the money is working, then we can create currencies that have both decentralization of cryptocurrencies, but also have values built in, that value of love and life and abundance and creativity that allows money now to become a healthy blood supply, like blood that takes in oxygen and takes it to the cells so that when money comes to somebody's life, it's a, it's a blessing arriving. It's got life-giving properties rather than debt attached to it and the requirement requirement for you to give a return on that investment and to work hard in order to prove your value. So this is a radical and deep shift, but it can't be taken unless we take it inside ourselves. So that's one of the most difficult things to do is to truly sit down and see yourself clearly and to see the way that you are using money and what that money is serving in your own life. Like what truly at the bottom line is it serving? And I say the bottom line because that is important. It's one thing to, to move money and your sexual energy and your life force when you are feeling great. It's another thing when you are feeling challenged. And for all we have to do is see the great exemplars of soul in the world that have already made the shift earlier. And that people, you know, whether it's a Gandhi or a Jesus or a, or a Lenin or an Einstein or all of these people that have had to choose what matters when push comes to shove, what matters at the bottom line. When you're standing with someone who's got a gun, when you are facing your own um, social suicide or crucifixion or whatever for your values, what truly matters? It's one thing to have values when you are well and 
loved and your life is really working. It's another to hold those values in times of crisis and change. And those are when we're tested for our values. So the same with our money. It's one thing to have uh, plenty of money and then to be able to be generous with it. It's another thing to be generous when you have no money and to be generous as a principle, not as the result of experiencing abundance. So abundance is not got to do with the circumstances of your life and of your finances. It's got to do with something inherent in the human spirit. So even if you are uh, only have um, the tiniest piece of income, abundance needs to be built into that income. It's not something for rich people to give. It's something for everybody that the primary basis of the human soul is love. And that love is there whether you have something or you don't. And the generosity of the human spirit is there whether you have something or you don't. So the, 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 the stealing of the natural generosity of the human soul by financial systems is a tragedy in the world. So the restoration of your generosity, of your flow of energy, of love, both to those who need something and towards those who you see are generating love in a way that you aren't able to yet, that gets the currency flowing. That gets the money in your life moving. So part of the audit of your um of the way your income and expenses are is also an audit of where your money is stored and why is your money stored there? Why is your money stored in a 501 or a, a, or a, um, in a, in a land bank or like, it's not just where it's stored, it's why you have put it there. And what is the motivation really when you think about it? go deeply into it. What is the motivation? And how can you shift that motivation from fear into love? And for some people, they, they do that radically. Other people do it incrementally. And the incremental is you don't need to shift it all at once. You don't have to change, you know, from one civilization to the other in one burst, unless you want to. You can change gradually. And gradually, as you just give a little bit more of your financial wealth to your own heart, let your heart decide, let love decide how to spend the money, not your mind cleverly thinking about how strategically to invest so that you get a return. Because the heart always, the return that the heart wants is more love. The, the, the heart will always invest in such a way that grows love and flows love in the world. The mind will invest out of cleverness and strategy and trickiness. So you can link heart and mind, yep, but make sure the heart link, the heart has the first say, where is love? And then use the mind to intelligently help more love be generated. So that's the, that's the challenge to anybody um, who's seeking to change the e economy of the world is to change fundamentally and first the economy that exists inside our own being. Where is the money in my life coming from? Where is it going? Why am I storing it where I'm storing it? How am I flowing it to where love is is blossoming in my life? How am I supporting my own creativity? And how am I shining without expectation of return? So when people are truly trying to make that shift between earning a living from you know, doing something that the world wants that will, will pay and shining their own light, at the beginning when they're first trying to do that, it's best to just give it away so that you're giving away your shining with no expectation of return and then gradually you start noticing that the world is valuing that. And then it's not valuing that as a transaction where you're like, here's the cost of what I want to give you. You're being valued because of the generosity of exchange. So the three levels of the temple, the first is transaction, which is the way the world is at the moment. And then there's the gift economy. And the gift economy is when you decide to just give without expectation of return. And then you start to receive without expectation of having to give anything. 
So when money starts to flow in your life based on love, based on the generative nature of your own soul and the recognition and gratitude of those that have been served by your shining, giving you something back. Now you've moved into gift economy. And most people who have had to make that shift from one to the other, move into some kind of gift economy, move into a period of giving, move into a, a experience of the abundance of the resources of their own soul and the expansion of love and their being that results from giving. And then gratitude starts to deeply emerge, gratitude for being able to give. It's like instead of the sun saying to the earth, you owe me, the sun says to the earth, thank you for receiving my shining. It's so beautiful that I'm able to give in this way and allow creativity to pour through me because love, when it moves through me, makes me feel great, makes me grow, makes me shine more deeply and more brightly. So now you've moved into gift economy. And then the next step from that is to give it all. So in other words, you know, there's a transition from giving to receive to then giving for the sake of giving. And then the last step is to be it all. So, and that is, you know, what, what um, T.S. Eliot calls a condition of complete simplicity, costing not less than everything. And so at that point, the being has already experienced the flow of energy moving through it and the joy of giving as a self to other selves, serving the community, serving the, the, their friends, serving others. But then the last step is to be the whole thing. So there's no real difference between you as giver and someone as receiver. There's no difference between the little piece of earth that you're on and the planet as a whole. There's no difference between ideas that come through your consciousness or ideas that come through somebody else's. Now the being has expanded and to be the soul of the world, to be the planet, that not to be one individual cell that's learning how to interact with other individual cells and flow energy, but to be the whole. And then when you're the whole, love and money naturally move to wherever in the whole needs the love and the money. If somebody else is holding a point and they're being creative and love's moving through them right now, then the money goes there. And if then somebody else is, because it's just the one thing, you're just aware of the one thing happening. So that's the the final stage of the development of the temple from transaction to gift to giving everything. And then you can step back out into the world and recognize that people are in those different levels. So you can step back out from the center of the temple where everything is given back into the realm of gifting. And then you can step back into the world of transaction because you know that people are paying you money because they don't want to pay the real price yet. And what's the real price? Giving everything. So, so then you are effectively becoming a money laundering system in your own being. You have no need for money. You've got um, tremendous contribution powers inside yourself, but people want to flow money and there can be a, a, an opportunity where you talk the language that people are talking in the world, which is transaction. So then you are like a Trojan horse, giving them something priceless for a price. Not because you need the price, but because that's all they're willing to pay in order not to pay everything. So in order to get there, actually each person has to make that transition and for society to get there, for the planet to get there, it's not about little bits of twiddling with the existing economic system. There's got to be a deep penetration of the fear and the survival at the core and a restoration of love at the center of money. So in the same way that many of you would have done this work around your sexuality, that as you begin to flow your erotic life as not just 
um, the act of sex, but as your erotic life connected to the erotic life of nature, and you begin to work with those energies of possessiveness and jealousies and, and all of the energies that come up in order for you to be able to live a life where your sacral center can flow energy with others. It's exactly the same with money that allowing money to be broken open by love to begin to flow according to the rules of love in your soul rather than your mind trying to preserve and control so that's the first step and then then we can look at imbuing currency and creating currency and money that is deeply serving life so one of the things that we're doing in temple culture and what we're doing at Haydn is, first of all, providing a space for people to come in and transact, okay? They're, they're coming from a world where there is transaction. So they come and they give money in order to receive soul initiatory programs. And then the next step is once they get that and once they feel the value of their own soul moving in them, then they move into gift economy. They come to contribute. They come to just come and pour their energy in because being in service, in true service as a soul, not the martyred service of a personality, but the overflow of love that comes from soul is itself a great reward. So then they come to contribute without expectation of return. And then the next stage is when people are contributing and they're flowing energy into a field, they're generating abundance. And then from that, as resources come in, those resources begin to be shared. Okay, so, but they're not shared in any kind of transactional, like I'll do this for that. They're shared as a result of blessing. So the two major ways that, as I've said, are soul and soil. And the, the two tests around that have got to do with ownership of, of our work and ownership of our creativity. So when somebody just comes in and pours their love into the soil and the soil responds. So at Highland, for example, it's planting gardens. People are just coming and growing and planting gardens. And then those people will leave and maybe the gardens go wild for a while. And then somebody else will come in and they will find sustenance for themselves and restore and grow the gardens until gradually more and more trees and more and more soil is, is expressing itself at Haydn. That's value now. That's wealth being generated. And the same with creativity. Some will come and their soul will be have an opportunity to serve into this impossible mission of the temples that we're doing and it'll say look i've got this gift that i want to give i want to offer myself to help hold other souls as they go through their growth i want to you know use the creativity and the skills that i've developed out there in the world to create a better tech system or whatever it is but there's giving so people now are coming into the culture primarily driven by their desire to give and to give without expectation. So then that starts to generate energy. And that energy starts to generate a feeling of overflow and abundance. And now we start to live in the middle ring of the temple, which is, oh, I don't have to work worry about surviving because I'm giving and that giving is naturally producing return. It's reducing return from the earth. It's reducing return from relationships with others because the generosity of the love is naturally life affirming. And then the next stage is we can generate once you know wealth, you know, and once you know that wealth does not come from your bank balance, once you know wealth comes from your relationship with soil and soul, and once you've let go of the intellectual property, property ownership thing that is um, controls and and opened into the giving. Once you realize that you're not, if you open your soul to the soul of the world, you're not just gonna have one good idea that you need to copyright and take to the market. You can have as many good ideas as the world's soul has good ideas. And not only that, you have access to all of the soul evolution through all time, all of the great thinkers and creators and givers to humanity. All of that is soul soil that you can draw on. And if you need ideas and creativity, 
creativity, the less you try to copyright them and make them yours, the more you return them back to the field of consciousness of the soul, the more you are imbued with creativity, the more energy wants to pour through you until until you know you're overflowing as as much creativity as you possibly could ever express in your life is wanting to pour through it's like a the whole ocean is trying to get itself through the little garden hose of one human being there is no limit to the resources of creative ideas and energy that's pouring through you because you've got access to the whole of the soul of the world and the soul of the universe and the same is true with with earth once you start to really relate to the soil that you're on as a living being, that soil is talking to all of the other soil of the earth. It's talking to the whole ecosystem of the planet. So now you have the whole living power of Gaia, of the earth itself, growing in your garden, coming up through your corn plants, you know. So this recognition then that you are everything and that everything you have access to if you define yourself to just one human being with one stock portfolio and three good ideas in his life then that's the life you'll live but if you expand yourself into being the whole of the soul of the world connected to everyone who's ever lived who's ever stood for the evolution of humanity now you have this rich resource bank that you can draw on just with a thought just with your heart expanding and opening just by picking up a piece of literature that somebody has already done or creating something for the future. And when you stand on the earth, you have access to the whole resources of the planet. So this is wealth. You know, when you have wealth, you know that you are rich. You know that the, the forces of cosmos are with you. You know that you have no shortage of value to offer others because it's pouring through you. So that wealth then means now you can start to create wealth. And now you can start to support other people to create wealth. And that means you, when you know wealth is where wealth is coming from, you can support others to enter the treasury building of cosmos. And, and the, the exhilaration that will break forth on the planet when people discover wealth where it truly is will, will shame us in a way, because first of all, the, the shame is that we've had a whole, you know, you know, decades now, many decades where the rich have got richer and the poor have got poorer in the existing financial system, where many people have got well past their survival issues in their life and they have plenty, and, you know, and they, and they then own the property and they own the wealth that, that um, you know, has accumulated over long periods of time from their families in the past, ever since we had property ship on it, but it hasn't made them take the next journey jump yet into true wealth and into true wealth they would let that go the clearing of the money cord of the money changes is if you have enough wealth to survive you at least have the opportunity to, to discover where wealth is but actually what's happened on the planet is that many of the people who are not in that system who are the poorest they understand wealth but the people who are the wealthiest do not understand wealth because the wealth is, that's been created has been created at the expense of true wealth. So the last step then is when you know wealth, when that is so deeply embedded in your being, in your own heart, in your body, that you know where, where wealth comes from and you know that it does not come from having money in the bank account. It comes from being in touch with the source of all wealth and primarily those two places, the source of it from soul, the source of it from soil, and then the heart. When your heart is open and generous and you give, now you have healthy relationships. And those healthy relationships are also a source of great wealth. So now you have that wealth and what you most want when you are wealthy in that way is you want other people to be wealthy. You, you want them to be rich. You want them to know the same source of wealth that you, you have. It's not that you want them to have money in the bank. You want them to be way richer than that. You want them to be so deeply sourced in, in the creativity and the core of their being in healthy relationships with others and in connection with the earth. So then true joy begins to break out. So one of the tragedies is, is um, knowing a secret that, that nobody wants to hear 
or if they want to hear, they can't hear because of the system that they are so deeply built within. So the first step of, of, um, of change is to get yourself free from the system. But getting yourself free from the system is not just changing out of you know fiat currency into crypto or going and living on a bit of land somewhere or it, it, it's changing the system doesn't necessarily change your relationship with wealth changing your relationship with wealth is deep inner work and finding the source of the wealth and proving to the cells in your body and to your heart and to your consciousness proving like a great scientist that, oh, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try with the assumption and the hypothesis that my true wealth lies not in the place that I have imagined. My wealth does not lie in me being a productive member of society, working hard to make a living so that I can then one day have holidays in some big cruise ship traveling the world. It's like, that's not the direction that the generation that's coming are going to go in. My true self of wealth is is to find what makes me come alive, to find a relationship with the earth that is nourishing and allows me to draw on the love that's pouring from the earth, to find a relationship with my soul purpose, with the core vibratory note that brought me into incarnation, which is exploding like a sun in the core of my being, if I'll just give my time and energy to it and allow it to pour forth. And true wealth is my connections and love, the place that has stored with other people. We all know that if you truly fall in love with others that love is eternal it's it's built into the soul soil of eternity it's there and it flows and enriches you and generations to come of you that's wealth and when you have that wealth everything then that you do and everything that flowers from that is not done from a to-do list it's not done from um, an attempt to survive it's done as an overflow of your own being Okay, so, so then I want to talk about how to create currency from that place. And because currency is not just, um, you know, a symbol, currency is, is a living expression of the movement of energy. And currency is a shamanic reality as well. You know, once currency was chickens and, and cabbages, and those are living things. You know, give someone a chicken, they can eat it. Give someone a cabbage, they can eat it. It's like there is there is a transition of, you know, wealth from being uh, gr grain and chicken and so on into wealth as being bits of paper or now bits of, you know, code on a blockchain. Okay, so there needs to be a restoration of a relationship between whatever currency, whatever symbol we use to exchange value between us, there's got to be a reconnection of that with the earth. And so, um, you know, we once had uh cabbage chicken and then we had gold and silver and then gradually we've split off currency from any backing by anything to do with the earth and now it's just governments issuing currency based on everybody having confidence in governments and then trading on that well that's all fading and the people who have the wealth in the world are desperately trying to find where is the new place to put it to preserve it but what they don't see is that there's a radical transformation of the world soul happening so there is no way that the cleverness of where to hide your wealth is going to work because the soul is coming for everybody the breaking out of that whole system to love and how do we create currency you know, one, one way is to, to release ourselves from fiat currency and, and go into cryptocurrency. And then the next step is how do we create currency now that is imbued with its source in soil and in soul? So there's both soul and soil are built into the currency, not just into its like design, um, but also into the fabric of what it is. What is currency and how does that move in such a way that connects us with our values? So we're in an experimental phase again at Haydn with, this, with temple culture. And at the moment, we're creating our own currency and, and it's an experiment. And we, we want to play with it to see 
first of all, how does currency used from the core of the temple to generate wealth and bless life? So that's the way the currency is used. So the currency is used in order to win life, in order to bless life when it's moving. So instead of the way currency is mostly used, which is I want to give you money in order to get something from you. This is when I see life that's moving from the core of the whole, that's in service to the whole, that is just life moving, give currency. So give currency as blessing rather than as transaction and, and, and give currency as generative where there is life, where life is moving in the temple and it is producing more life, then reinforce that with currency. So now currency is life-based. At the same time, connect that with the earth. So when the soil is growing things, when productivity is happening and there is abundance being generated, not for transaction, but just out of the generosity and love of the human spirit, now anchor that in currency. So those two places of generating, you only generate currency when you have already created some abundance by giving. And then you use that currency to move it towards where life is emerging, where creativity is emerging, where somebody's soul is standing up and saying, I've got this piece that I want to bring forth and it's alive in me and bursting forth in me, give currency. Notice where life is emerging and reinforce it with the currency of value. So the way that act looks like in the outer is creating a coin in the core of each temple made out of the sacred minerals of the earth that holds true fiat currency, which is currency expressed by an act of the will in connection with life. So now you have a source at the core of every temple of currency. And then you have a way of issuing that currency that flows to people who are expressing expressing life already in the temple, who then can generate and create currency and overflow it to others who are learning to express life. The whole thing only growing as fast as contribution is being made within the temple, so that over a, a decade or so, the currency of a temple begins to be issued, and it's backed by the life force and the creativity and the generosity and love of those people that are involved, and also by the growing partnership with the earth, with uh, the soil expressing, with the creativity of building, with all of the things that are happening at the temple. Those two energies mean that you're now anchoring your currency in matter and in spirit. And therefore, the currency is imbued with those energies, which in a way, everything already is. But because you're doing it consciously, you're now aligning what currency feels like and looks like and how it flows with the core principles at the core of the soul. So this is the next step from just currency being... Um, blockchain and uh, free of all value systems and all consciousness, but also free of the command and control of governments. Now you're starting to build into currency itself the principles of the soul, the principles of love, the principles of freedom, the principles of deep creativity, so that the currency itself becomes a living expression of those principles that are alive. So, uh, that's our experiment in in the temple culture and uh there's there's so much joy that's re already being released in in the idea of liberating the way we use money from the way that people are currently working with money and then the idea is to then have an exchange rate between temple currency and the currency of fiat in the world, the, the, the fiat currency of, of um, governments and so on. And gradually over time, as those people who stand for the soul in the world generate true wealth, then there will be more and more requirement for people to want to launder their money for true wealth. So I think this is one of the, the like I said before, the tragedies of the human spirit is that 
is that people are missing out on the wealth and the abundance that lives in the core of their own being in their pursuit of a symbol that's got debt laden within it that is taking them away from their own soul. And at a certain point of time, most people's lives, they would rather give all of their money to get back their wealth because they, their, their, their connection to their soul has been severed. And so if we live in a society that severed its connection to soul, the time comes when that soul becomes the most important thing and people would do anything for it. So when that time comes in the world, all of that money that's in the fiat will come and get laundered with temple culture and currency. So temples are not just places like Highland temples are, happen wherever somebody has broken out of fear running the core of their life and they have based their life anchored deeply to their own deep knowing in love and that becomes a temple that becomes an anchor point on the earth where somebody's body has their soul all the way in the base center that's pulled out that primal fear and survival that's living in your base and anchored it in love so now you have a life based on love and it's been tested it's not just on a good day it's been tested in relationship it's been tested in your relationship with your own creativity and with the earth itself now you're a living point in the temple and from that place true wealth can begin to emerge so then currency can begin to flow between us so this is another powerful thing that's happening in the world now is people are crowdfunding they're they're finding a way where 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 the flow of life force and the flow of abundance can move when we all feel as world soul that there is life moving and life wants to move here and something in our heart says yes i'm going to give because there's something happening here which is which is growing not just me but growing the heart in the world so these are these are many ways, there are many ways that we can work right now with the currencies that we have at the same time as continuing the work of creating new currency and then also learning how to create hierarchies of love rather than hierarchies of fear. And now we're starting to really move into the Aquarian age, which is not just take away all power structures and everybody collectively uses hive mind to somehow create um, a better world. It's more a recognition that there are many different layers and levels and capacities that humans have. And when hierarchies of love appear, then people who are capable of holding and supporting others create fields in which those others can flourish and grow. And then they create fields in which others can um, grow. So this is like the layering of the universe, that we live and sit within great fields of evolution. And that evolution is friendly and beneficent and has within it a power of love in the same way that nature does. And one of the, the exhausting things that's been happening for human beings is turning nature into the enemy, whether it's the coronavirus or whether it's the forests or whether it's our, the germs in our own body or whatever that, that energy is that makes us afraid of nature also is the same energy that has fear and money because nature and money and the abundance of the earth are so deeply linked. So getting through the terrors of not surviving, that somehow nature might be against us, that we might get some disease, that we might get old and sick and we need plenty of money for our medical expenses and so on. All of that is part of the same thing and putting pressure on that. It's not like you can just walk out, out of that. You might have to do it over a decade or so, but putting pressure on that so you can prove to yourself not only where wealth comes from, but where love comes from and where support comes from, where nourishment comes from. And then once you are rich because you are connected with that wealth, then the generosity naturally flows. This is what I said at the beginning. We're shifting from a culture where 
the bottom line is the duty and obligation of the personality to survive, the duty of companies to produce a return for their shareholders, the duty of governments to keep their people safe and to keep them, them out from um, invaders. And we're shifting all of that to a culture where the soul is grateful for the opportunity to love that earth is then seen as what it truly is, which is a magnificent, abundant educational school for souls to prove how much they love and to bring forth the energy that's at the core of them to bring that love into a world of love in relationship with each other, in relationship with nature and in relationship with cosmos. <sighs> So I'm going to pause there and just let that drop into the field and maybe um, open to a few comments and questions and so on so we can steer the, the last part of our time together. You know, I feel like right now on the planet, this is a very critical piece and, and it requires a deep um, need to both look at ourselves and play our part in the change and then also look at our systems look at our economic systems and so on and adjust those systems so that they reflect the changes that are inherent in the human soul so yeah i'd like to hear from people who are part of that process or have questions about that process or comments about it So if you have a, a question or, or comment, just raise your hand and uh, we'll get someone to unmute you. Rafa. Yeah. Can you unmute Rafa? Uh, we just asked someone else to put their hand up. Okay. I have it on, so I could find it. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm on. Yes. Yes. Hi. Oh, so good to see you. Um, you. Well, yeah, amazing. And uh, some of what you shared course rings uh, a bell I've, I've, heard, I've been in containers about money with you before and um, still discovering new layers so I wonder if you could say something about or even if my memory is, is you know uh, or, or my attunement is, is on, on the point there about um, the polarity with money and resources between flowing and circulating money through oneself or through a group of people and also and the accumulation part or the like creating a reservoir uh, which of course you know can be done for survival um, uh, reasons and out of fear but also it can be done to accumulate or, or this is what I feel it could be done to accumulate uh, one's potential like electric potential and then act in a different way. And I know at least for myself and some people that I love, um, many people that I love, the flow part has been the easy one or the easier one to, to get, but the, the creating the reservoir is the one that brings up um, confusion, shame, and, and when is it out of survival? When is it out of actually wanting to increase one's capacity? So I wonder if you could, um, elucidate that uh, for, for me and for others who might be interested. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Much love. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Of, uh, I, I feel like the, the key word here is investment. And remember I said before that that these were all soul worlds once that have been turned into financial terms like appreciation and value and interest. And to invest oneself is is for the soul to put itself into matter 
in such a way that creates the reservoir. And that reservoir can underwrite all kinds of things like flow keeps things moving, but investment creates a reservoir that allows uh, greater potential to happen than could happen from flow. But the idea of investment has become about investment for return. And that return has become about return of money. So it's like I'm taking money and I'm putting that money in order to make more money. So investing has become purely about money generating more money. If that investment is turned into the a, a, a creating a reservoir for the sake of love, that actually a, a piece of love like the heart has a whole reservoir of blood so that it can it can underwrite all of the cells of the body that need blood by supplying it. And so if investment is not focused on a return on investment from a financial sense, but a, re a return on investment for love. So then you're like saying, okay, I want to start this movement or I want to create this thing. I need a reservoir of money or I, I, I know how to flow energy from my own soul, but you know what? I want to write a book and I need six months to to write that book so that I can I can invest myself for a whole period of time in my own creativity and the soul energy that wants to move through me or I want to invest in in um in in a, in a garden so that then more people can you know eat fruit from the garden so this is investment and I think that the it, it, the, the, some people are afraid to accumulate resource because they feel like accumulating resources somehow taking that from other people. And in a world where people are starving to death, why, why would I be accumulating resource? Well, if the accumulation is based on fear or if it's based on a return on investment for the sake of getting more money that one day you'll figure out what to do with, those things are not really going to be supported by the soul. But if it's based on, oh my God, I, I, I've, I know how to flow energy and now I'm, I want to take a big bite. I want to I wanna invest a whole chunk of energy in order to produce something much bigger than just my day-to-day -day flow. Then, uh, then we're talking about investments that, that can flow through multi-generations. And wouldn't it be amazing if governments, you know, could invest way past their five-year term of office, investing in this great flow of the soul and soil of the world so that future generations are feeling that investment of love. And one of the things that I love about Europe at the moment is young people are suing the governments because of the taking away of their future. Why is their future being taken away? Is because short-term investment based on rate of return, based on fear and control, is stopping the flow of love that should be moved generations in advance so yeah i feel like to invest means your love has to grow stronger than just just flowing it's got to it's got to um pour itself into the flow of energy that's beyond your own self into into a, a greater reservoir of life and love. So yeah, how, who are the new investors? And you know, the investment bankers are, you know, are not necessarily people that should be taking your money and turning it into more money, but they're soul beings that support your soul to invest in itself into the soul of others so that your future creativity is even more expanded. So yeah, there's a, a I love the I love the movement um, of currency and reservoir that yeah dams is the reason for having the dam is the reason for having the lake that is a reservoir of water that is the most important thing. So yeah, thank you. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> um, Hi. Hi. So I was just really amazed by so right before I came into the session actually all day today I was just doing some inner work around money and the words that kind of dropped on the on the page before the session was like saying yes to being rich and being wealthy feels like surrendering myself to God and um, immediately noticed like also 
um, less and less, but like shame arising around that as though like God and wealth cannot be used in the same kind of sentence. Um, but also I think connecting to your response to Rafa about how accumulation actually creates even more potential for love to flow even more powerfully. Um, I guess my question is, I feel like there's there needs to be a purification that needs to happen on the kind of personal level. Uh, because I'm noticing in my own journey how um, even if the intention is to align and orient towards love and towards the higher kind of soul and soil, um, there's still the egoic wounds that comes into play. And I guess my question is how to balance it so that the personality is actually supporting um, that flow and that surrender to God without being crashed entirely, but also without being indulged in either. So it's like, how, how do you balance um, that? Yeah, it, it's a beautiful question, Jelan. And uh, um, I'm just, what came up for me was, was, was the recognizing, it's a bit like the trauma work, trauma and initiation. You know, if you go too fast, you traumatize yourself and you slow it down. But if you don't go fast enough, you don't actually initiate. So. I know my experience with money was uh, was losing it all, like trying to de deciding early on in my life before my Saturn return that, okay, it, this seems to be the way that the world works. I'll go and accumulate the money that I need so I can do my soul work. And then in one night in 1987 and the share market crashed, everything, hundreds of thousands of dollars just were wiped out in one night. And, and the next day I just felt so exhilarated, you know, like, of course I felt terrified, but also felt exhilarated because I knew that in that moment, I would never do anything for money again. I would never go and try to make money in order to one day live my life purpose that that cut me so deeply and so beautifully and so the same is true in relationship as well right you know I often say get betrayed deeply and you know and early and completely so you never look for love outside of yourself to compensate for the fact that you haven't found love inside yourself so you can do it in a radical way or you can do it gradually in relationship where you gradually love somebody and experience love and gradually that gets turned back into yourself so that you find the love inside you and I feel like it's exactly the same with wealth like because of what I'm saying is that the true wealth is our God-given nature it's not something that we acquire it's something we already have and when we discover that we're just overwhelmed with gratitude for even being alive and and that uh, having a body is already enormous wealth given to us from the earth and having soul and spirit is like we're just incredibly grateful for the opportunity to be alive and to be wealthy but our Egos don't know that because they've been conditioned and created from being response in, in a society that that feels that we need to respond to the outer world in order to be of value. So, um, you know, some people can do it in a one hit and other people do it gradually. And my experience of doing it gradually so you don't traumatize yourself is just try with a little bit. Try taking a little portion of the money that you have and giving it to your heart to decide how to spend and then watch, see what happens and then try taking a bit more and a bit more. So I feel like each person has to kind of feel their own degree of risk. It's just like, you know, when you invest in the money markets, they say like, do you want a high risk investment or a low risk investment? And I think some souls are high risk, extreme sport kind of souls, which is me. And other souls are like, let's, let's just go at a pace that doesn't traumatize us and keeps us like growing and learning. And so I, I think that like each person's risk portfolio is different. And, uh, and that's why it's so important sovereignty, just like in sexuality and other things, is to be able to know yourself and to know when you need to take a big step now and to know when you don't. I love the, the, um, the someone from the Hunger Project used to say about writing a check. You know, if you want to write a check, you should write a check big enough that your hand shakes, but not so big that you can't write it. Good to see you, Jaylan.
Yeah, hi, hi Bruce, it's Matt here. Um, just uh, wanted to say that what you're saying was, uh, you know, really resonated with me. And uh, when I think about my own journey and um, and sort of working to uh, sort of, I guess, accumulate money, doing something that really wasn't my life's path, it all seemed like the world was very black and white. And although I was, you know, accumulating money, it um, it really held no wealth, and I and it was really used in a way that was trying to bring or keep life away, but also like try to bring color into it with in a false way, mm. and um, rather than experiencing the life in the color that it already is, and um, so it was really quite a quite amazing words that that sort of really touched my heart, I guess, and and then when you were talking about the giving of, um, you know, of money, it really sort of took me back to my childhood, the feelings of around about 11 or so, and um, and that sort of natural giving that you give when you're when you're a child, and uh, it was really powerful. I think, you know, thank you very much for that, uh, for those messages. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, if it, if it wasn't so heartbreaking, it would be hilarious that uh, we have a whole civilization on the planet that are busy trying to make money so that they can then, you know, either be happy or, or be fulfilled or then self-realize, you know, it's like Maslow's pyramid first take care of your survival needs and then take your emotional needs. And then maybe one day you'll self-realize. So that whole thing, if it worked, you should be able to show people that it's worked. You should be able to go to the so-called civilized countries of the world where people have a high standard of living. And you should be able to demonstrate that these people have got to a point where they self-realize. And when they self-realize, they become exquisitely happy and joyful because they're bringing forward the, the whole essence of what it is to be human. They've, they've gotten through survival and they're now in this exquisite outpouring. They're supernova as sons and they're pouring their joy and their love in the world. It's like, if that works, Work, you should be able to show proof of it working but you know that it's very small mostly in the western world people with money are desperately unhappy you know and and even civilizations like in new zealand we have one of the highest standards of living in the world and also have one of the highest teenage suicide rates so if we were truly a culture that was that was able to flower the soul because we've survived and now we can contribute to the world then our young people would be you know wouldn't be taking on huge debts for education they wouldn't be like encouraged to take a big mortgage to get a house they would be they'd be encouraged to like be the sole expression that we've all built survival over many generations towards. So it's tragic because it's fatally flawed and yet everybody is still doing it as if that was the way. So the new civilization is not Maslow's pyramid. It's not based on survive first and then one day you'll get to get a, a taste of soul. New civilization is based on soul first that actually before you were a body mind who had to do all of that work to become a soul, you are a soul. And we're bringing in consciously created, educated beings now that know their souls. They don't have to survive first and then have a midlife crisis. And there's no time on the world for that to happen anyway. There's no resources. There's not enough biodiversity for everybody to go through that same process of making money and then eventually, you know, like not self-realizing. So at the beginning, the culture it has to be love first, your connection to spirit first, your true wealth as a, as a creative being who's, who's a, a drawing on the abundance of earth and the abundance of cosmos, that first. And then when we see that soul in the generation that's coming and when we honor that and we support it, then we help them develop a personality and a body mind about how to express that in the world. So, you know, the, the kind of tragedy of the, of the old path is you've got to be someone first and create an established, you know, platform and then you can awaken. 
no, you, you've got to start awake. The civilization that's coming has got to start from that so that we don't send young people on that same journey that we made. We send them on a journey that celebrates their soul and their gifts. And then we flower that and support that. You know, young, instead of people, young people paying for an education and having to sue the government so that they can have a future planet, they should be supported by the wealth of the generations that's already here, lifting them and holding them towards their soul evolution instead of go get a job doing something that your soul doesn't want to do. Like I could go on and on about that a long time. It's a key piece that I had to fight for in my own life. And I've had to, to, to fight for in the life of others to break free of that tragic weight that we just pass on from generation to generation. And it's the opposite of creating healthy soul soil for the generations to grow in. Okay, end of that rant. Any more questions? On, yes, hello. Hi, hello everyone. Um, wow, well, thank you so much. Um, I thought I'd skip this one today, but um, I just, had an, a huge emotional release um, when you were talking about the currency, money and currency and flow. I had this huge emotional release um, around my father who died six years ago from blood cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he was holding a lot of stress around money. Um, and what, uh, yeah, a bit of background. Uh, so he, we were running transformational festivals at Prana, Coromandel. Mm -hmm. And um, at the, the parallel, like there were parallel forces going on. The, we were funding the events and the lifestyle and the vision for celebrating life and love, you know, all inspired by Osho and Sanyasan the sannyasin way of life but at the same time there was debt mm. um so he was caught in between he had this grand vision and um he had a way for resources from another business to fund what we were doing you know for like 24 years he was holding this but mm. somewhere along the line he had needed to get a loan from the bank and you know it's sort of like and he was, he was always kind of battling this. And I think it, you know, and it caused so much stress and, um, and he eventually died from the stress and the, you know, in the blood, the cancer got into the blood, the flow of, of the, the currency of life. And, and, you know, and I'd say he was such an amazing man, a Pluto conjunct sun and Leo full on. Mm forceful and and driven by by his vision for love and how life should be but at the same time that force of debt you know that weighing heavily and um that's happened now and it's six years ago but I just had a huge emotional release around it because I'm yeah me myself if now I'm trying to reestablish and reconstruct my relationship to money and to my own flow and my own creativity, but it's been a huge wound. And um, yeah, mm. just wanted to thank you for bringing that out in me today. Mm. But yeah, thank you for your 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 um, willingness to open your heart and. I feel like people like your father, you know, uh, are bridge builders between worlds, you know, they provided spaces for, you know, the seeds of new worlds to begin, you know, and of course, like all bridges between worlds, you know, the same in species development, you know, it, it's a very high risk place because you have to draw from both civilizations and the support structures of the new civilizations not here so you're you're a bridge builder you're building from the old and i do think that with one of the recommendations that i say is don't take on debt not even for the new world because taking on debt 
it ties you to the old world and it and and even taking on money that people wanted a return on investment and it's part of the old situation i would rather use ten dollars given freely from love for the new world than a million dollars given with the strings of the old world and the debt so so you know he took on great pillars standing between the world of debt and so on for the vision for the future and I think that where we are now in, in the gap between worlds is that it's, it's, it's better to grow slower with, with full new civilization values than try to be ripped apart between the worlds. And even though I really respect those who are in deeply embedded in the civilization that is trying to bring radical change I feel like the tension of that can be huge and uh and of course you know his soul is done its work and the survival of his body mind is is one thing but the contribution of his soul is another and that's I say if 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 the true civilization that's coming is recognized of our contribution and our capacity to love then that's what will be celebrated that's what will be celebrated and that's what we supported and probably now more money would be available from other sources for him and i think for anyone who's now standing on that bridge between bringing new world values into a world that's still deeply embedded in the past best not to use the technology of the past best best not to use the money from the banks and from the systems i know at item we had to make this huge decision not to even insure the place and the, the insurance would have been about 50,000 a year in case it got burned down. And there's just so much love that we can do with that 50,000. There's just so much that we can pour into wealth creation and flowering. And there's just so, so, so much risk. And so everybody who's there knows that if they, if they leave a candle, you know, burning, then the whole thing may come down, but with that knowledge and the fact that we're using that resource for something else also inspires them to be a custodian and support that love. So, yeah, when you tell the universe, I'm not taking on debt, I want to be supported for the soul stand that I'm taking on behalf of humanity, then the universe knows to get resources to you another way. And um, one of the, the powers of, of watching Haydn come and go over 25 years holding on the physical plane and then leaving and then coming back is that it's let me know in my bones just how much magic can come if you are aligning with the world that's coming. So to all those pioneers that uh, have already done their work, like your father, like his, his work is now part of the soul soil of New Zealand. And it's part of the resource that people like me and others draw on as we make our stand um, for the future. So that lineage, that tradition is part of all of our hearts. Thank you. I can't unmute myself. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm go. I think we're going to start to wrap up, and this is something that's urgent and um, life affirming that needs to be said. I, think I need to conclude today. So maybe let's just take a moment to feel the currency of love between us like you're here because you're you're in between worlds or you're the new world arriving and one of the things that we have that the world of investment and banking and so on doesn't have is that we have connections based on love and and that love increasingly is seen as not copyrighted for this individual or that individual but when we see love moving in the world that our love moves with it that the soul is one soul and so the soul any any person who stands up in the world as part of the world soul has every other awake person 
alive or dead throughout time, they're supporting them because the soul naturally moves towards love and flowers love. So this provides an incredible wealth that is of connection. And that wealth may be experienced just as a ray of energy coming into your heart in a difficult time. It may be a donation arriving of you know money. It may be the, the earth in a park resourcing your soul when you go for a walk in the middle of a city when you're having a an important meeting like all of this is wealth and uh we when we circulate it we grow it like a magnetic field we generate and so becoming generators together of a new civilization and a new culture and and a new currency based on love is um yeah something that that gets me up in the morning and really excites me uh so yeah staying connected around this in and staying connected with um different systems of value like supporting each other with your cryptocurrency recommendations with your new currency recommendations with your needs and in, in terms of temple culture where temples are landing or starting to flower in the world to realize that we don't have to just create a reservoir for ourselves but the reservoir is already there in the world it's in the hands and hearts of many people who want to see things flowering and i remember when mother teresa was asked once where will the money come from for this new orphanage? Her response was, from wherever it is right now, you know? So we have a huge bank account in the hearts of all of our brothers and sisters all over the world who care about love, whose heart is moved when they feel love, when they feel life moving. And that's a reservoir that doesn't need to be sitting in your bank account. It, it's there when you stand up for who you are, when you let the life in you shine forth and the new world come, then everybody else who longs for that world in their hearts is on your side, is in your corner and has resources that want to move towards you. See you next time. Um, much love and blessings and wherever you are in that journey with your money between worlds. And, you know, the last thing I want to say is like, do the audit, you know, not because not as another thing to beat yourself over the head from like, you're not enlightened enough or whatever, but do the audit. So you can see where love can take more of your money and launder it and turn it into something that's true wealth.